So the first thing that um, I want to talk about is a little bit about what we did last class and how that ties into what we're doing next. So last class, you found the starting and ending points of this graph, and you used that to calculate the average velocity. You also then picked two other points on the graph and found that slope, which was also your average velocity, which happened to be the same. Then you found another point here, and you found the tangent line at that point. And right there, that was also the same slope. Now, at that moment in time, that was the instantaneous velocity. So you found the tangent line. And the tangent line represents instantaneous velocity. Now, what instantaneous velocity is, is how fast are you going at that exact moment in time? So at the beginning, do you see how the instantaneous velocity or that tangent line is less steep than your average? Okay, so that means at the beginning, I'm going slower. At the end, it's like this steep, which means at the end, I'm going faster. Because now the line is steeper than the average velocity. At some point in the middle of this, it must have been the same steepness because it went from not as steep to steeper. Well, at some point then, that means at some moment in time, they must have been the same. And what you guys found out is that happens at exactly half of the time. So on your worksheet one on that first graph, at three seconds, the velocity was half, or sorry, at half of the time, the velocity was the same. And I know this is not perfectly to scale, but I tried. Make sense? Yeah. Are we good with that? Okay. Yeah. Noses. Okay. So, that means that at half of the time, I was going the average speed and my instantaneous speed at that middle point is the same. Does that make sense? So the average speed for the whole time is the same as my instantaneous speed at the middle, or middle time, I should say. Um, so we are going to take this and we are going to... Take it one step farther, um, and we are going to apply it to number 13. All right, the triangle on here means the change in. So this is the change in time. This is the change in position. T mid is the middle time, and this is your average velocity. So I'm going to show you how to get each of these. And then for each of them, I'm going to give you guys a minute to go ahead and go through that row or column and fill the rest in. Does that make sense? Okay. So this first one, to find your change in time, I need to look at what the time was and what the time will be, and I subtract them. So 1 minus 0 is 1. Okay, then I look at these two. What's 2 minus 1? One? 1. Then I look at these two. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. Go all the way down that column. All right. Change in position. So for this, we're going to figure out how much that position changes. So here I'm looking at those two. So I'm doing 5, oops, 5 minus 0 is equal to 5. For the next one, I look at the difference between these two. Well, that's between 5 and 20. 
How far is it between 5 and 20? How much did the position change? 15. So 20 minus 5 is 15. Does that make sense? Yes, good? All right. Do the rest of that column. All right, so for time mid, think about it as your middle time between the two that it's next to. So if I'm doing T mid, I'm looking at these two times, and I want to know what is the time that's halfway between those. What's halfway between 0 and 1? 0.5. Then I look at the next one. Halfway between, oops. Halfway between 1 and 2 is 1.5. All right, now go ahead and do that row. All right, so for the last column, you need to remember what velocity is. So velocity is position divided by time, right? But here, we are looking at a range of times where we know that it's speeding up. So we're actually going to find the average velocity between these two points because it's changing. So this line over the top means your average velocity. And our average velocity then is going to be my change in position divided by my change in time. Well, you just figured out what those things were. Your change in position was right here. So that's going to go right there. And your change in time is right here. And that's going to go down there. Does that make sense? Good? Okay. So change in position is 5. Ta change in time was 1. That means that my average velocity is 5. Now, remember I said, when does that velocity happen? Well, that velocity is going to happen at the middle time between those two extremes. Well, that's going to be when this happens, right? So on your graph, once you finish doing this, you're going to then graph time mid versus velocity, or velocity versus time. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, so that means, and, and uh, here's my challenge to you, is don't mess this up. This is what you're graphing. You are not graphing anything over here. You don't care about any of those numbers anymore. You've already used them to calculate the stuff over here. That's what you're going to graph. It's just the time middle versus average velocity. Um, when you go to graph this, remember how I want it to be big. Okay, so then the question I get is, Ms. Pink, how do I know what to count by? Here is my answer for you. Um, you want to know how many, like how many numbers per box, right? So your question is how many numbers per box? Well, you just need to do exactly that. You need to figure out how many numbers there are and how many boxes there are. So what you're going to do is you're going to count what your maximum number you need to graph and divide it by the number of boxes. And that will give you the minimum number per box. Does that make sense? So if you get 1.2, you don't want to count by 1.2. That would be really annoying. But counting by 2 sounds fine. Does that make sense? 
If you get 3.1, you cannot count by three. That's not bigger. But you could count by fours or fives. Make sense? So I want your graph to be as big as possible. So keep that in mind as you are graphing. Ready, set, go. So for the next one, this is number 14. That T squared column, you just take the times and you square them. So I'm going to rewrite this. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and 6 squared is 36. Then what you're going to do is you are going to graph it, and you're going to put time squared down here. And you're going to do position over here. So again, we are going to ignore this first row. And you're going to graph the other two. Are you good with that? Yes? OK. Don't let it freak you out. You should end up with like four dots really close in and then like a few spread out over here. Does that make sense? So that's the way it's supposed to be. Don't let it weird you out. So you're doing your position versus time squared graph. But most of the time you're saying you start at zero. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, and then same with this. This is just how far you went. Okay. This is where you start compared to where so you went. So it would be like, let's say that it says that the distance is three. Then we would just do three minus zero. Yeah. Okay. Or just ignore the X naught and just put in three. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you. 